When you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth shopping Fred Meyer for thousands of appetizing ingredients that inspire countless mouth-watering meals. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week and up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with points. So you can get big flavors and big savings. Fred Meyer, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply. Every team, every topic, everywhere. This is Believe. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Halloween Podcast. I am your host, Lyle Perez, and today is day three of our Haunted America series. Today we're going to take a look at the great state of Arizona, also known as the Grand Canyon State. The state may be known for its scorching temperatures and stunning landscapes, but beneath that heat lies a wealth of eerie stories and haunted locations that are sure to send shivers down your spine. From haunted hotels to ghostly towns, Arizona is brimming with paranormal activity. So put your seatbelt on, guys, because we are going to get spooky. Our first stop takes us to Flagstaff, home to the historic Hotel Monta Vista, built in 1927. This hotel has been a staple of the town, hosting countless travelers and famous guests, including John Wayne and Clark Gable. However, it's the less famous, yet far more ghostly, residents that have earned the hotel its haunted reputation. One of the most famous spirits is that of a bellboy who reportedly haunts the second floor. Guests have claimed to hear a knock at their door, only to open it and find no one there, except for a cold, eerie presence. The bellboy, dressed in his old uniform, has been seen standing outside of rooms, holding his tray, as if waiting for instructions. He's known to disappear as quickly as he appears, leaving only the lingering sense that someone, or something, is still watching. Another frequent ghost sighting is in room 305, where a long-term female resident who lived in the hotel in the 1940s is said to have passed away. Her ghost is often seen sitting in the rocking chair by the window, staring out as if waiting for someone. The chair is said to rock on its own, even when no one is around. Guests have also reported hearing faint whispers and feeling cold drafts, despite the room being closed off. The Hotel Monta Vista is open to the public, and you can book a room if you dare. Next, we head to Tombstone, one of the most famous towns of the Old West. The Birdcage Theater, built in 1881, was once a bustling saloon, gambling hall, and brothel known for its wild parties and frequent gunfights. It's said that 26 people lost their lives in the birdcage during its heyday, and many believe their spirits still linger. Visitors have reported hearing the sounds of laughter, music, and gunshots echoing through the empty theater. These residual hauntings seem to capture the energy of the past, replaying the sounds of the theater's heyday. Apparitions of former patrons including cowboys and ladies of the night, have been spotted throughout the building. One of the most famous spirits is that of a woman in a white dress who is often seen on the balcony overseeing the stage. She's been known to show a sad expression at visitors before vanishing into thin air. The Birdcage Theater is open to the public as a museum, allowing visitors to explore its haunted halls and perhaps encounter one of its ghostly residents.
Our third stop is the Jerome Grand Hotel in the former mining town of Jerome. This building has a dark history. Originally serving as the United Verde Hospital when it was built in 1926, the hospital was notorious for its high mortality rate and it said that many patients who checked in never left, at least not in the way that they intended. Today the building operates as a hotel, but it's far from peaceful. Guests and staff alike have reported hearing ghostly moans, footsteps, and even the sound of hospital gurneys being wheeled down the halls. One of the most famous spirits is that of Claude Harvey, a maintenance man who reportedly fell to his death down an elevator shaft under mysterious circumstances in 1935. His ghost is often seen roaming the basement and lower levels of the hotel, and guests have felt cold hands brush against them and heard the distant hum of a broken elevator. The Jerome Grand Hotel is open for overnight stays, offering thrill seekers the chance to experience its haunted histories firsthand. Heading further south, we arrive at the Copper Queen Hotel in Bisbee. This historic hotel, built in 1902 by the Phelps Dodge Corporation, was once the height of luxury for those visiting the booming mining town. However, over the years, it has become just as well known for its ghostly inhabitants. The most famous spirit is that of Julia Lowell who was believed to have been a prostitute during the early 1900s. Julia's ghost is often seen in her former room, where she is said to be waiting for her next client. Guests have reported smelling her perfume in the hallways and hearing the sound of high heels clicking on the floor. She's been known to whisper in men's ears, offering propositions just as she did in life. Some guests have even felt a cold, invisible touch on their shoulder, as if Julia is still trying to entice them. Another spirit is that of a young boy named Billy, who is often seen playing on the stairs and in the hallways. Billy is known for his mischievous nature, pulling pranks on guests by moving objects and turning lights on and off. His laughter echoes through the corridors, and some have seen his small figure darting around corners, only to disappear when they follow. The Copper Queen Hotel is open to the public, and guests can request to stay in one of the haunted rooms. Just be prepared, because you might see something in the middle of the night. And now we travel to Phoenix for our number 5 location, which is the Orpheum Theater. This location has been entertaining audiences since 1929. This historic theater has seen countless performances, but it's also known for its ghostly activity. The most famous spirit here is that of a woman named Maddie, who is believed to be a former actress or patron. Maddie's ghost is often seen in the balcony, watching performances and wandering the halls in a flowing dress. She's known to appear during shows, particularly during dramatic scenes, as if she's drawn to the energy of the performance. Theater staff and visitors have reported strange noises, unexplained cold spots, and even seeing Maddie's figure out of the corner of their eye, only for her to vanish when they take a closer look. Some have felt cold hands on their shoulders or heard a soft sigh behind them, but when they turn, no one is there. The Orpheum Theater is still an active venue, and while it's open to the public for shows and events, it's not uncommon for guests to have a paranormal experience during their visit. For our sixth location, we're staying in Phoenix. We visit the San Carlos Hotel, which has a history as long as it is haunted. The hotel opened in 1928, but the land it sits on has a much darker past. Before the hotel was built, 
The site was home to the first school in Phoenix, and it's said that a tragic event involving a young girl haunts the property to this day. (laughs) The most famous ghost at the San Carlos is that of Leon Jensen, a young woman who jumped to her death from the roof of the hotel shortly after it opened. Her tragic story is shrouded in mystery, but some believe that she was heartbroken over a failed romance. Leon's ghost is often seen roaming the halls, wearing a long white dress. She's been known to approach guests, appearing as a normal person, only to vanish when they get close. Other reports include unexplained noises, cold spots, and even the sensation of being touched by unseen hands. Guests have woken up in the middle of the night to find Leon standing at the foot of their bed, her face a mask of sorrow before she fades away. The San Carlos Hotel is open for overnight stays, making it another stop in Phoenix where you can test your courage against the paranormal. Next, we venture out to Wickenburg, where the Vulture Mine stands as a relic of Arizona's mining past. Established in 1863, the Vulture Mine was once the most productive gold mine in Arizona, but it also had a dark side. The harsh conditions led to numerous deaths, and the area was known for its frequent hangings of those accused of stealing gold. Today the mine is abandoned, but the spirits of those who died there are said to still linger. Visitors to the mine have reported hearing disembodied voices, seeing shadowy figures, and feeling an overwhelming sense of dread. The spirits are believed to be those of the miners who lost their lives in tragic accidents or met untimely ends. Some have seen the ghost of Henry Wickenburg, the mine's founder, who is said to roam the area, guarding his claim even in death. The gallows where thieves were hanged are still standing, and visitors have felt a choking sensation or heard the creak of the rope swinging in the wind. The mine is open for tours, allowing visitors to explore the old buildings and perhaps encounter one of the spirits who still call Venture Mine home. Now we head over to Yuma, home to the famous Yuma Territorial Prison. Built in 1875, the prison housed some of the most dangerous criminals of the time, earning it its nickname, the Hellhole. Life in the prison was harsh, and many inmates died within its walls, either from disease, violence, or attempts to escape. The prison is now a museum, but it's also known for its paranormal activity. Visitors have reported hearing the sounds of cell doors slamming, seeing ghostly apparitions, and feeling a heavy, oppressive atmosphere in certain areas. One of the most active spots is the Dark Cell, a solitary confinement area where prisoners were kept in total darkness. Those who have entered the Dark Cell have reported hearing whispers, seeing shadowy figures moving in the darkness, and feeling an overwhelming sense of being watched. Some have even felt an icy hand brush against them or heard the sounds of chains rattling, despite being completely alone. The Yuma Territorial Prison is open to the public, and ghost tours are often for those brave enough to explore its haunted history. Our next haunted location takes us underground to the Grand Canyon Caverns, near Peach Springs. These caverns, formed millions of years ago, are a natural wonder, but they also come with a ghostly legend. During the Great Depression, the caverns were used as shelters, and it's said that a group of travelers who sought refuge there never made it out. Visitors to the caves have reported strange occurrences, including hearing whispers, seeing unexplained lights, and feeling chilling presence. The spirits are believed to be those of the travelers who died there, still trapped in the darkness of the caverns. Some have even seen shadowy figures moving through the tunnels, 
while others have heard the faint sounds of voices coming out as if the lost souls are still trying to find their way out. The Grand Canyon Caverns are open for tours, and for the truly brave, there's even an option to spend the night in the underground suite, where the eerie silence is only broken by the occasional ghostly encounter. And our 10th and final stop in Arizona is the Gad's Den Hotel in Douglas, a grand and historic building that dates back to 1907. The hotel has seen its share of history, including a devastating fire in 1928 that destroyed most of the original structure. However, it was rebuilt, and today it stands as a beautiful example of early 20th century architecture. But the Gadsden Hotel is also known for its ghosts. The most famous is that of a young bride who was tragically killed in a fire. Guests have reported seeing her ghost wandering the halls, often described wearing a wedding dress. She's been known to appear in the hotel's grand staircase, her figure shimmering as she descends, only to vanish before she reaches the bottom. Other paranormal activity includes objects moving on their own, unexplained cold spots, and the sound of footsteps echoing through empty corridors. Some guests have reported hearing the faint sound of wedding music, as if the bride is still trying to reach her groom. The Gadsden Hotel is open for guests, offering a chance to experience both its luxurious accommodations and its haunted history. And there you have it, guys. That is 10 haunted locations in the state of Arizona. Thank you guys so much for taking this tour with me as we go to every single state in the Haunted America series. We are going to look at 10 haunted locations from each state. We made it all the way up to Arizona. And now next, I believe we are going to Arkansas. So make sure you guys come back tomorrow for that episode. If you guys are enjoying this Haunted America series, please consider leaving us a five-star review on either Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts from. If you have any questions, comments, or want to suggest anything for a future show, go ahead, send me an email at thehalloweenpodcast at gmail.com. Make sure you go to our new website, thehalloweenpodcast.com, where you can pick up some cool podcast merch. Each sale goes to help the Halloween podcast, pay for hosting, production costs. All of those things are covered by you guys. All you got to do is just purchase some merch right on the website. Easy peasy. And if you want to hang out with the Halloween podcast community, just go to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash the Halloween podcast. We have a lot of cool people there. I post a lot of cool content throughout the year, basically. And yeah, we'd love to have you guys out there. So go ahead, like the page and we'll see you there. Have a good night.